Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about hydrocodone. Hydrocodone is a semi-synthetic derivative of a material, uh, an alkaloid, that's found in the opium poppy seed. It's used for moderate to severe pain and sometimes used as a cough suppressant. The overwhelming majority of hydrocodone produced in the world is consumed here in the United States to such an extent that if we look at the number of prescriptions written with refills, that would be enough to provide two prescriptions to every man, woman, and child living here in the United States. And that far surpasses the number two drug, thyroid drug. The history, well, it was first synthesized in Germany in 1920. It was approved for use in the United States in 1943. It was manufactured in Germany by Knoll Pharmaceuticals that came out as a product known as Diclodid. Dicloded, fortunately for them, didn't really catch on. And as a matter of fact, they don't even use the hydrocodone in Germany anymore, or frankly, all that much in Europe. First cases of habituation and euphoria with the drug, they were reported as early as 1923. The dependence and addiction, that was reported as long ago as 1961. Now, there are hundreds of brand name and generic forms of hydrocodone, typically mixed with acetaminophen, that's the product in Tylenol. And the most commonly used drugs, or commonly known drugs, are Vicodin and Lortab. They're basically the same thing. Well, how do you rate the strength of the drug? Most people do it on the ability of the hydrocodone to constrict the pupil. That's a false measure. We know that it would take you about 50% more hydrocodone compared to oxycodone to get the same amount of pupillary constriction. On the other hand, if you happen to break your leg and you go to the emergency room, the drugs appear to be equivalent. If you compare it to an injection of morphine, for every one milligram of injected morphine, you would need about two and a half milligrams of oral hydrocodone, but if you look at oral morphine versus oral hydrocodone, they seem to be equivalent. And if you compare it to codeine, you need about 30 milligrams of codeine to give you the same amount of pain relief that you would get with five milligrams of hydrocodone. Now, most of the drug is used as an immediate release. You take the drug and it dissolves and gets into your system right away. It's not an extended release product that you can take once or twice a day. Most of the hydrocodone is either combined with aspirin, sometimes with ibuprofen, but almost always with acetaminophen. It's combined with anywhere between 325 milligrams and 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen, but the acetaminophen isn't really there to provide extra pain relief. It's so that you don't break the pill down and inject it. Now, the old idea was that if you didn't have pain, you couldn't become addicted to the product, but that is absolutely false. As a matter of fact, if you combine the hydrocodone acetaminophen with a depressant of the central nervous system, you're much more likely to have a side effect, an overdose, or die. Yet, in spite of this, it appears that one person in three taking the drug also takes a sedative. About one person in eight consumes at least two drinks of alcohol within two hours of the pill, one in 30 do both. Most of the deaths come from combination of the hydrocodone added to a muscle relaxant or alcohol or a benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepine, a drug that would be like Xanax. It's habit forming, can lead to physical, psychological dependence. So the Food and Drug Administration in 2014 said, we're not classifying this like we have for the longest period of time as a class three drug. We're going to consider it a class two drug. And a class two drug, you have to have a doctor write a prescription. You can't call it into the pharmacy. And you can only get a 90-day supply, one month supply times two refills. You cannot get a five-month refill. That's a major difference as far as how often you have to go see the doctor, what the costs are. But it's worth it because, unfortunately, people are abusing this drug. In fact, the overwhelming majority of people who take the drug abuse the drug. They don't take it for legitimate medical reasons. Now, everybody has the potential to become addicted to this drug once they start to take it, but there are special risk factors. So, for instance, if you have a psychological or psychiatric disease, if you're 
suffer from anxiety or depression, you're more likely to become addicted to this drug if you start taking it. If you have a history of substance abuse, you smoke cigarettes, you consume alcohol, you're more likely to be at risk. And the longer you take the drug, the more tolerance you get. The more tolerance you get, the more quantity you need, either a higher dose of the pill or you need to take the pill more frequently. When we're talking about the immediate release form, once you take it, it starts to dissolve and get into the system within 20 to 30 minutes. It peaks at about 30 to 60 minutes and lasts for about four to eight hours, and then you have to take another dose. Now, it's the most potentially deadly of all prescription medicines, it and oxycodone. As a matter of fact, by 2011, there were more people who died of overdoses of either oxycodone or hydrocodone than there were who died in automobile accidents. Each year in the United States, somewhere between 50,000 and 55,000 people die of drug overdoses. Some of those are legal drugs, some of those are illegal drugs. It seems that about 25,000 to 30,000 people are going to die of the narcotics, significant number, about 500,000 people are going to go to the emergency room every year because of toxic reactions to these kind of drugs. People who take them get a feeling of euphoria, they feel better. So they start off at one or two pills, and then pretty soon they're on 10 pills or 20 pills or even more. The pills can have some side effects associated with them. We all know that. They can cause you to have nausea or vomiting, a colossal case of constipation. So you go to the bathroom only once or twice a week. They can cause dizziness and drowsiness, lightheadedness and anxiety. They can lead to either an elevated mood or a depressed mood. They can cause rashes, itches. They can narrow your pupils, they can lead to irregular breathing, and sometimes chest tightness, shortness of breath. And for men, especially men who take the prolonged release or the extended release form, it can interfere with production of testosterone. You know what that means. Infrequently, it can cause progressive hearing loss. And there's a special problem for women who are pregnant who take the pill. We know that the unborn child may become addicted and then cause problems after delivery with a neonatal withdrawal syndrome. We also know that it can lead to respiratory depression in the fetus, and it can also lead to an increased incidence of birth defects. The pill is especially problematic for people who have sleep apnea or asthma or bad bronchitis. Now, the hydrocodone by itself isn't really toxic to the liver, small benefit, doesn't increase your liver blood test, but when you combine it with acetaminophen, then you open the door for significant problem. There's no evidence that taking more than 325 milligrams of acetaminophen combined with a hydrocodone provides any extra relief, but it does lead to an increased incidence of liver failure, need for liver transplant, and death from liver toxicity. There's especially a problem with your liver if you drink alcohol or maybe you have muscle ache or pain or maybe you have a cough and you go over to the drugstore and you get one of the commonly used over-the-counter drugs. They frequently contain additional acetaminophen. There's a limit to about 4,000 milligrams of acetaminophen that you can take per day without increasing your risk of liver toxicity or cirrhosis or some other kind of severe problem. The acetaminophen was added to hydrocodone in 1998 in order to prevent people from crushing the pill, snorting it, or injecting the pill. Well, interestingly, the Food and Drug Administration in 2011 said to the drug companies that manufactured hydrocodone, they said, you're putting too much acetaminophen in the pill. Let's limit it to no more than 325 milligrams and do that by 2014. It's voluntary, but if you don't do it, we're going to make a rule that says all drugs that have more than 300 milligrams or 325 milligrams have to come off the market. There's a problem with hydrocodone if you combine it with other drugs that are going to affect the central nervous system. So if you combine it with alcohol, you're at higher risk of respiratory failure and death, or if you take it with another opioid, or you take it with an antihistamine, or an antipsychotic, an anti-anxiety drug like Xanax, or maybe even if you take Prozac or Zoloft, any of the central nervous system depressants can increase the likelihood of toxicity. 
withdrawal reactions can occur as early as 6 to 12 hours after your last dose. That means if you take a pill before you go to bed, well, by the time you wake up, you can start to have withdrawal reactions. The withdrawal reactions peak about 72 hours after you stop taking the pill. They last for about five to seven days, but can last for weeks or even months. And the cravings and the emotional changes, they can last for years. The symptoms of withdrawal, they include restlessness, sweating, chills. They include muscle and bone aches and pains. You can have some insomnia, diarrhea. You can have vomiting, mood swings, headache. Some people have depression or fatigue. Some people even consider suicide. But you also can take too much of the drug. And if you take too much of the drug, if you overdose on the drug, then you have other kinds of problems. The pupils become narrow, but as there's less oxygen going to your brain, they become widened. Your respirations can become shallow and short or ultimately stop. Your heart rate goes down. Your skin gets to be cold and clammy, sometimes turns blue, excessively sleepy. You can lose consciousness, you can have seizures, you can even die. The maximum you should take is 60 milligrams of hydrocodone per day and 4,000 milligrams of acetaminophen per day. So that means you should take no more than 12 pills of the standard 5 milligram hydrocodone, 325 milligram acetaminophen per day. Additionally, there are about 200 million prescriptions written for these drugs each year in the United States. It's estimated that there are 5 million addicts, 5 million people taking the drug for inappropriate reasons here in the United States. And unfortunately, you take the pill, you feel well, so you overuse it, and eventually that's going to lead to addiction. We have a lot of drug mills here in the United States. Some prescribe what's known as the Trinity. That's hydrocodone combined with a muscle relaxant and a benzodiazepine like Xanax. Or the Holy Trinity, that's oxycodone instead, again combined with a muscle relaxant and a benzodiazepine. Now every day in the United States, somewhere between 45 and 50 people die of an overdose. 45 to 50 people per day die of overdose of oxycodone or hydrocodone. That's a major number. That adds up to more than 16,000, up to 20,000 people per year die of this medicine. And for each person who dies, 30 more are going to go to the emergency room. The way the drug works, well, it binds to some opioid receptors in the brain and in the gut and probably some other areas in the body. That's the way you get the benefit, supposedly. That's the way you get the toxicity. Once you take the drug, it's metabolized by a liver enzyme to uh, another product called hydromorphone. And the hydromorphone is even more potent than the hydrocodone. Now, interestingly, we have all this problem. Everyone knows we have a problem with hydrocodone when it's combined with another pain medicine, like either aspirin or acetaminophen or ibuprofen. But the Food and Drug Administration in 2014 allowed marketing of a drug known as dihydro-ER. The ER stands for extended release. This releases over a period of about 12 hours, so you only have to take two a day, supposedly. It's only for people who have severe pain, who have prolonged pain, round the clock, necessity for taking some kind of a pain medication, but there's no evidence it's less addictive, no evidence it's any better. And unfortunately, with these extended release pills, we have a higher incidence of toxicity. Well, it's a Schedule II drug, just like the hydrocodone, that's the immediate release. But interestingly, the Food and Drug Administration has an advisory panel, and the advisory panel said, hey, don't market this drug, don't allow it to be marketed in 30 states protested to the FDA that this drug should not be marketed. So the FDA said, okay, let's market the drug. Well, unfortunately, there was the tendency for the drug to be abused and potentially snorted or injected because it was a pure hydrocodone. It didn't have any of that acetaminophen in it. So very quickly after it was approved in 2014, by 2015 it had to be reformulated. We have a problem with diversion. So people go to doctor's offices and they alter prescriptions, they 
steal the prescription pad, they doctor shop and get lots of different prescriptions from lots of different doctors, or they get an excessive number of prescriptions, excessive number of pills. You go see the dentist, he takes a tooth out, gives you a month's supply of the pill. Ridiculous. You're going to have pain for two or three or four days. That's all you need at most. Most of the drug abuse in the United States is thought to be blue-collar type, sort of the rural areas, but hydrocodone is a white-collar type pill. Now, heroin costs about $15 a bag, and when you compare that to a single black market hydrocodone for about 5 to $7 a pill, or oxycodone that can go for up to $80 a pill, you can see that now these drugs are fueling a heroin epidemic, a horrible heroin epidemic that's occurring in the United States. And unfortunately, heroin, we'll talk about in a different segment, is being added to fentanyl, and now we have another major cause of death. Well, hydrocodone is for short-term pain relief. It's for the pain that you would have after uh, an operation or a fracture, or it's for people who have terminal illness who are going to die in a relatively short period of time. On the other hand, more than 90%, 90% of hydrocodone that's used in the United States is used for chronic pain. But guess what? It doesn't work. The people who have chronic pain still have chronic pain when they're taking the drug. So that means the drug is ineffective for the purposes that it's prescribed. And the drug is often prescribed for people who have arthritis or people who have low back pain, people who have nerve pain. It is not to be used for those particular kinds of problems. And as a matter of fact, it can cause a paradoxical problem. So you take the pill and you actually have more pain. Now, there's another issue. What about the cost? Well, if we're talking about going to a legitimate pharmacy, if you get a month's worth of hydrocodone combined with acetaminophen, the cost is usually somewhere around $35, $45 for the generic, or maybe up to $500 for the name brand product. So what do we say about the overall cost? Cost is reasonable if you buy a generic product. What do we say about the effectiveness? Well, it's used mostly for chronic pain, and for chronic pain it doesn't work. It's okay for acute pain after you have your operation, after you have a tooth extracted, if you break a leg, yeah, it's okay. On the other hand, the way it's used in the United States right now, inappropriate. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.